الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. In the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we start our project and our program and our sessions and episodes of Eternal Message. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone that I praise and I worship, for He is the only one worthy of worship. And I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He will guide us to the truth. You and I and everyone else that is listening to us and everyone out there in the world, may they be guided to the truth of Islam, to the understandings of the religion of the prophets of all time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have the Qur'an al-Kareem, our guidance in our hearts. And may this world be a beginning of a success in the hereafter. May our deeds all be overwhelming on the scale when we are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May our good deeds, inshallah, overwhelm. Brothers and sisters out there, as I welcome you, I would like to welcome the brothers here. I would like to welcome Brother Akmal from Malaysia. And I would like to welcome Brother Noor from Indonesia. And I'd like to welcome Brother Abdul Fattah from the United States. Are you okay, Abdul Fattah? I'm doing good. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And Brother Ibrahim from Guinea Kanakri in Africa. And I welcome you that is sitting in your household or in your office or wherever you're at watching us because it is a good sign that you're watching Al Huda TV because we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're talking about the afterlife that concerns all of us. Brothers and sisters, last episode. We started talking about the day of judgment. And we reached where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will approach. And all of us will be called to do sujood. And those who have performed their sujood in this life, they will do so in the hereafter. And those who did not, their arrogance or their disbelief, they will not be able to do so on that day. But this day is not over yet. There are a lot of events that we would like to talk about and finish. But we like to get to the destination. For the series, we have two episodes left of it. This episode and the episode after it. So forgive me if I have skipped some of the things. For I know you have much knowledge to learn. I and yourself. Brothers and sisters, after all of this, the Lord comes and His angels one after another, name by name, people will be called for questioning. We will hear hellfire near. We will hear that the sounds and screams of hellfire waiting just to grab whoever is going to come. And we will also see Jannah waiting for its occupants. And we will see the scale that has two hands. The right hand for the good deeds and the left hand for the bad deeds. And then all of a sudden, while you're waiting, you hear your name. Ya Muhammad, Ya Abdullah, Ya Maryam, Ya Aisha. Whatever name that you have, you'll hear your name. The name that was used for you and you will be called to approach. And you will enter in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no interpreter or attorney to argue on your behalf. And if you were a believer, you would be allowed to raise your head and to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you were not, you will not be allowed to raise your head and you will be forced to have it down. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not lift himself for you to see. That they're covered from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the questionings will start. You will be given your book. You will read it. And you have to answer to everything that you have done. And hopefully... You and I will have answers. At the end of the questioning, while you're alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the verdict will come. And you will be giving the verdict either on your right hand or on your left hand or behind your back. Whoever is given his book with his right hand, 
And you will come out with excitement and joy and your hands are up and you're screaming out, Ha umukra'u kitabiya, here, read my book, inni. I knew that I would be here today. Ha umukra'u kitabiya, inni dhanantu, anni mulaqin hisabiya. Fahuwa fi ishatin radiyah, fi jannatin aliyah, kutufuha daniyah, kulu wa shrabu hani'an, bima aslaftum fil ayyam al-khaliyah. We'll get to these ayats on the next episode when we talk about heaven, insha'Allah. Mm-hmm. When you walk out and say, here, read my book. I knew I was going to come for my judgment. Inni, I knew that I will be asked mm-hmm. and you will be told to go back with joy and to be, be happy with your family. And you will be in Jannah that has high space and trees all over them, branches and so forth. We'll talk about it, insha'Allah. But on the other hand, those who are given their books in the left hand, they walk out screaming, crying. They lost all the hope. Ya laytani lam uta kitabi. I wish I was never given my book. Ya laytaha kanat al qadiyah. I wish that death was the last death of mine. I wish it was an ending. Ma aghna anni maliya. My wealth did not help me. Halaka anni sultaniya. My Power and fame and family and tribes did not help me. And the verdict comes, Take them and burn them. And settle him in the midst of fire. Boil him. Barbecue him. إِنَّهُ كَانَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ he never believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the great. Brothers and sisters, that's the verdict that will come for those who disbelieve. And then people will be dragged with their foreheads and thrown in hellfire on their faces and on their nose. They will be thrown with force. Hopefully none of us I have to go through that. It's a gruesome life, but I have to share it with you. And I apologize if there's children sitting next to you. But they also need to know. And we'll let them see that the other side, the good side of heaven, so they can prepare. So I know some of what I say might not seem appropriate for some people because it's hellfire. But it's reality. And if you don't prepare your children, then they might be in trouble. Noor, you had a question? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, would you like to tell us uh, about the hell's condition in hereafter? As I ever heard that the simplest punishment in the hell is, is uh, the punishment of Abu Talib, uh, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. InshaAllah. We'll talk about that as soon as, we ent- as soon as we enter with our explanation about hellfire, inshaAllah. And it is true what you have just said. That notice that the least punished in hellfire, my brothers and sisters, is the uncle of the Rasul and his punishment is a charcoal that is put under his feet. And with the heat of that charcoal, his brain boils. Akmal, you had a question? Yeah. Uh, can, can a Muslim uh, be given uh, on his uh, left hand? I mean, uh, the book uh, can be... Yes, there are some Muslims that would receive their books with their left hand because their bad deeds overwhelm their good deeds and they might be thrown in hellfire mm-hmm. for a period of time. Hellfire, brothers and sisters, is not one level. It's many levels down. It's called darakat. Darakat. Mm-hmm. And hellfire, my brothers and sisters, is basically not always hot. There is a section where it's burning. It's called Jahim, Jahannam, Sa'ir. And then there is another section where it's freezing. It's called Zamharir. 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 And imagine the punishment of being put in ultimate fire. The fire that is 1,000 more over the normal fire that we have today. 
It needs 3,000 years for the fire that we have to reach the temperature of the fire of hellfire in the day of judgment. The heat of the hellfire in the day of judgment. Then you're taken into the section of Zamharir, where it's freezing. Then back and forth. Back and forth. Let me share with you a group of people that would have some punishments Yom al Qiyamah. How severe it is. And those kinds of punishments throughout the rest of this episode, inshallah. There's a man, a kind of a person, that his intestines will be out of his stomach. And he will be rotating around his intestines. I'm sorry again for this gruesome description. May you forgive me and your children. If they can handle it, they can walk out and return when we talk about Jannah in the next episode, inshallah. But he will be circulating around his intestines. Why? Even though he looked like a good man, people of hell will come to him. And they say, weren't you someone that used to call us to doing good and encouraged us not to, do, uh, to, uh, to stay away from bad? Mm-hmm. He said, yes, I used to call you to do good and I did not do it. And prohibit you and discourage you from doing bad and I did it. He was someone that did not follow his own teachings. Mm-hmm. He'll be going around and around and around and around and around his intestines. Brothers and sisters, after the break, We'll bring a few more examples, probably as gruesome as we just said right now. My intent is to bring to your attention that hellfire is not a place for you. And for you to start preparing yourself to be in another place, in a place of heaven. But I need to let it reach you, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained it to us. After the break, we will resume. So take a rest and breathe and ask Allah forgiveness for may He forgive us all. We will return a few. Thank you. Labbayk Allahumma labbayk Labbayk Allahumma labbayk Labbayk la sharika laka labbayk Innal hamda Hajj step by step Hajj is a great act of worship performed by millions of Muslims every year If you would like to know what ihram is the types of hajj kinds of tawaf permitted and forbidden acts during hajj Join Dr. Musa McGuire and Sheikh Mohammed Salah in his wonderful show, Hajj Step by Step. But what specifically are, are the benefits of Hajj? Performing Hajj and Umrah overcome poverty and remove sin. The permanent mahram, a person who can never marry to this woman. Uh, what is the, the first rite of Hajj? And is it accurate to say that Hajj actually begins before you even get to that? The ihram of a woman actually is in her face and hands. The very first house of worship was appointed for mankind on earth is Al Kaaba. Hajj step by step, where he will explain all of that and more in the light of Quran and Sunnah. Huda, a light in every home. I welcome you back, my viewer, again with my apology over some of the things that I have been explaining in this episode, but they're true in fact. Some people will be punished in hellfire by climbing mountains. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Quran, سَأُرْهِقُهُ سَعُودًا That 
this group will be climbing the mountain until they reach to the top thinking they can escape. But then they're thrown down. They're thrown back. And then he continues again and again and again. And forever he's climbing. People get hungry in hell. Do you know what their food? Shajara, tree, minzaqum. It looks like the heads of the devil. It looks like the head of the devil. When they eat it, it tears every part of their intestines. Every part. They're told, Dhoqo, taste it. This is the food that you're going to be eating. They get thirsty. Do you know what their drink is? Their food, first of all, does not eat it except the worst of the people. Those who made mistakes in life. And their drink? There's a variety of drinks. There's boiling water. They drink it. And it takes everything out with it when it comes out from the other side. And at times, their drink is liquid that comes from the burning skins of people. And liquid from the bodies of prostitutes or the sweat. That's the kind of drink that people of hellfire drank. Every time that punishment reaches where it burns the skin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exchanges it with a new skin. كُلَّمَا نَاضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُنُودًا غَيْرَهَا يَذُوكُ الْعَذَابِ Every time that their skin has been burnt, نَاضِجَتْ, cooked, بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا We exchange them with new skin so they can taste the pain. Imagine, brothers and sisters in hell, that people will be calling and calling and screaming for a long, long time. Ya Malik! O oh Malik! The guardian of hell. Liyaqdi alayna rabbuk. Let your Lord finish us off. And he answers after 70,000 years. Innakum makithun. You are there to stay. Allah Ta'ala said, وَهُمْ يَسْتَرِخُونَ فِيهَا They're screaming in there. They're screaming. وَهُمْ يَسْتَرِخُونَ فِيهَا But there's no way out. There's no end. In the hadith, on the day of judgment, death will be brought in the shape of a sheep. And it will be put in between hell and heaven. And then it will be slaughtered. And then a call will, will, be, will be brought out to the people of hell. Ya ahl nar Torture and punishment for eternity with no death. Khuludun bila mawt. We are ahl al-jannah. People of heaven. Pleasure and joy and happiness without death. Khuludun also bila mawt. Wa amma al-ladhina shaqu. Those who went wrong. They're there forever. There's no way out. Do you know the fuel of hellfire, brothers and sisters? The fuel of hellfire is rocks in you if you don't follow the truth. You, if you're not willing to believe. You, if you looked away when you heard the call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the punishment. Punishment with humiliation. Yes, you're huge in hell. The tooth of a person in hell is as huge as the Mount of Uhud. 
but it doesn't make a difference. It's torture. Sa'ira. Let yourself read Surah Al Qiyamah and see the kind of tortures of people that are in hell. Let yourself read the chapter of Amma, Juz Amma, the whole 30th Juz, and find out what happens in hell. Read Surah Al Ra'd and Al Hijr. And you can see, and no one escapes hellfire. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا لَا تُفَتَّحُ لَهُمْ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ وَلَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى يَلِجَ الْجَمَلُ فِي سَمِّ الْخِيَاطِ And those who disbelieved in our signs, and they, are, and they lied, and they belied us, the heavens, the gates of heavens will not open for them and they will not enter Jannah until the rope of a ship, that big rope, can enter the eye of a needle. The people of hell, they will scream to the people of Jannah. وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ In Surah Al-A'raf أَنْ أَفِيذُ عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ Give us some water. Or something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with. The answer, Inna Allah harramahuma ala al-kafirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them forbidden on those who disbelieved. Brothers and sisters, you sit under the shade fearing the sun. What are you going to do to fear hellfire? There's no end. There's no food. Do you know who your, the acquaintance of hellfire are? The devil. Pharaoh. Abu Jah. Al Walid ibn al Mughira. Numrud. And all those throughout the nations that have killed and committed the crimes and oppressed the people. And declared war against Allah. You're going to be among the criminals. Not the righteous people. Hellfire, my dear brothers and sisters. Is a place. Where. The last man that comes out of it. Will actually just pray. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns his face away from it. Just looking at it. Ya yeah, no. It's scary. And you know, hellfire never gets enough. Hellfire never gets enough until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stops on it to have, for it to have enough. In Surah Qaf, there's a verse there. Do you all remember that verse? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells hellfire, Halim Talati, are you full? And it will say, Halimin Mazid. Is there more? Is there more? Hellfire wants more. Don't let yourself be one of those more. Brothers and sisters, it does not take much to pre prevent yourself from being there. Prayers five times a day. Each prayer does not take five minutes. You declare prior to that that there is no Lord worthy of worship except Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah is the key to assure yourself that one day you'll be in Jannah in heaven. And then to prevent yourself from committing the major sins that you and I do agree that there are sins. Killing, stealing, interest, adultery, magic, gossiping, backbiting, Oppressing the others. Domestic abuse with your wife. Wrongfully raising your children. Bothering your neighbor. Eating the forbidden alcohol, pork, 
drugs. All of these, brothers and sisters, we agree that we should avoid in the first place, regardless if it was faith or not. Now add to it that if you do, you enter hell that burns without an ending. I can see the face here and the faces here. Seems like that they're stunned because of what they just heard. I'm sure you're sitting there stunned yourself and wondering, what can I do? We have just a few moments left before the end of this episode. Let's catch the last question, a quick one, inshallah, okay, inshallah. from Akmal. Yeah. Uh, somebody has, has been punished in, in dunya. Uh, can be, uh, are they going to be punished uh, for the second time? It depends on what that crime is. Question is, someone has been punished for a crime that he has committed in this life. Will that punishment repeat in the hereafter? It depends what the crime is. Most likely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will not combine two punishments for one crime. But if someone had killed somebody and was punished for that crime, he still has to pay for the deceased for what the crime that he has committed. Mm -hmm. Don't take a chance thinking that you can get away with it. Brothers and sisters, I know this episode have left us edgy and uncomfortable. And I apologize again for this. But you need to hear it, and you have. But be with us in the next episode, inshallah. And we will talk about heaven, paradise. We'll bring back the joy into your heart. It will be our last episode of the series of Eternal Message. It's been a great ride. And we'll finalize our ride by settling ourselves in heaven. The eternal message. I'm your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.